Son, and God our Lord. Father, I thank you for this time of privilege. Today, I'm going to pull out one of my Dumeril's bows. She is a female, nearly three years old. She's a big girl. This is not as big as what a Dumeril's bow can get, but she's probably, she's thick. She's nice and thick, and she's getting there. I have to use the snake hook and she can she can be a bit cantankerous. Um, she's curled up in the corner here in this in this tank. <laughs> and um, I always always use my hook to tap hook just to to wake her up, get her, make sure that she understands that it's not food. Um, she did eat her about two weeks ago and she doesn't really like to come out and I put my hand in like that and she turns her hand towards me then it's a bit of a problem and then boy, let me get her, let me get her out. Okay, so this big girl, this beautiful big girl here is Athena and she is my female Dumeril's boa. Okay, um, she's had a nice shed a, a while back. She's been soaking and um, she had a good shed, I'm trying to keep her away from my face. Always keep the snakes away from your hot breath so that you can avoid getting struck on the face. It's a heat source. <laughs> um, I need to handle this girl more. She's a she's a beautiful snake and she is strong. I mean, her tail is hooked around my bicep now. And I can tell you now, I can feel it. I can feel it. So the important thing, and funny enough, I'm actually a bit more nervous around her than I am around my retic. Um, I guess it's because she's taken, she's taken a, a, she's tried to bite me once or twice. Um, in her defense, the only time she tried to bite me was when she was in the blue and I didn't really pick it up, okay? But I've done a, I've done a video on Dumeril's bows before and I think the one that I pulled out was my male Dumeril's bow who's quite a lot um, smaller than her. Uh, maybe about as long but not, uh, definitely not as thick as, as she is. Okay, this is a this is a nice big thick heavy girl here, and she actually has got a pretty cool temperament. She's a, she is a lovely snake. She's relaxing now. She's uh, she doesn't really like to come out of her tank. She likes to chill in the tank, um, and uh, but you know yeah, I want to I want to handle her more. I want to get her more socialized. And I uh, just also want to show that they are really good pets. Dumeril's boa is a, is, a nice, uh, is a nice snake to have in between a ball python and let's say a retic or, or a Burmese python or, or something like that, okay? I don't really like her coming up around my face just yet, okay? Um, I haven't handled this snake um as much as what i handle my retics and so on and so forth so, so when she starts going around the face that's just for me at the moment a bit of a no-no okay um, because the last time she came when she did strike for me the last time it was straight at my face shum right like that. i just had this huge white pinky mouth open 180 degrees coming straight for my face and fortunately, I managed to to swing her around, and 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 she she didn't get me. Okay, but you can see she's a big girl, and she's a beautiful girl as well. You know, re um, Dumerals come in two different types of uh, color traits. This is one of them. It's a brown, light brown, tan, dark brown color, and then they can also <clears throat> come in a well what you would like the exantic the pastel exantic uh, ball pythons that black and white gray 
color exactly like where you'd see the, the the browns and the tans on this it would be black and white and gray and that is a beautiful 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 snake um it really is and i actually would really really like to get one that is that is that color um so this girl uh you know, I don't breed um, to make money on these snakes. Uh, this this girl is more of a pet than anything else. Although I actually need to handle her and chill with her more so that she, you know, so that I can enjoy her as a pet. But, you know, I've got so many snakes to, to pull out. And usually I find that by the time it's time to pull her out after I've gone through all my snakes, it's time to feed her again. And then I've got to leave her alone for at least four or five days. Um, and then she sheds and then you've got to leave her alone for another 10, 7 to 10 days. Um, but actually she's, she seems like she's actually quite a honey. Um, I've been bitten so many times by my smaller snakes that it's not, a, it's really not an issue. But I just really don't want to get bitten by her, you know. Um, but I've, I've, uh. I'm starting to get a little bit better around her. I know that Dumerals are really high on the list of great intermediate um, constrictors to have if you don't want to get them too big. If you, if you, if a retic stuck, for example, too much to handle, this girl will get seven feet, eight feet maybe at a push, I think, and I stand to be corrected. So if I'm wrong and someone's got a Dumerals that's bigger than seven or eight feet, please drop a, drop a comment below. Um, but yeah, you're really getting the, the docile nature of a, of a ball python. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying every ball python is docile. And the other day I did a video where I was saying, and I was handling my retic and I was saying, if you get bitten, it's your fault, etc., etc. nine times out of 10. I, I kind of want to retract that statement a little bit because sure, there are things that you can do most of the time when you get bitten, but you do get snakes that are just, some of them are son of a bitches. Okay, there, you can do nothing to that snake and the snake will just literally want to bite you. You can be as gentle as you want. You can try and socialize, socialize it as much as you want. You can, um, you can handle it as much as you want. You can be careful with it. You can tap hook train it. And there's just, it's almost sometimes there's, no, no, no taming it down. For example, I've got a Ridley's cave dwelling rat snake and I handled it about 10 minutes ago and I think I got bitten 15 times. Okay. Um, and it just, nothing that I did wrong. It, it was defensive strikes for sure. Um, it was nervous. It was scared. However, I was doing everything right. I was calm. I was gentle. I took the, I took the bites. Um, you won't really see anything drew a little bit of blood but they're such tiny little pinpricks um but there is just nothing really that i can do with that snake except for handle it more and and try and get it to 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 socialize like this girl here i haven't had her out for weeks and this is her first time out in in weeks and look look how chilled she is i'm still absolutely on my guard with her um and and maybe I don't even need to be, you know. I've always said Dumeril's bows are just such fantastic pet snakes. But preferably, you know, when you feed a snake, you leave it alone for 48 hours. A big snake like a, like a Dumeril's like this, I would leave alone for three days. Uh, and a retic, I wouldn't pick them up for three days. Um, but the general rule, rule of thumb is 24 to 48 hours. And then, and then after that, pull it out every single day and hold it, interact with it, let it get used to you, and and you get used to you get used to it. Uh, and it can be rewarding, and it can be cool. And she's heavy, I tell you something now. So, like, if you don't want a snake that's gonna get, I mean, she get a bit bigger than this. I'm I'm six foot one, six foot one inches, and and this snake will easily get as long as I am tall. Uh, if I had to extend my arms out uh, the length of my, my, you know, you can, I can't, I actually don't want to stretch her out because, 
don't want to hurt her or anything like that and I don't want to startle her but I'm, I'm trying to get a bit of a I haven't measured her um, but I would say she's probably about five four four and a half feet maybe I don't know from the, from the tip of my fingers to my shoulder here is one meter and she's curled up a little bit and I'm, I'm 180, 185, 1 meter 85 so I would say she's about 4 feet maybe and she's got like a, a lovely yellow patch underneath, I mean, a white patch if she cooperates, what's up here? And underneath her, her, her jaw I don't know what else to say much about it, incredibly intimidating looking snake I mean when you look at that face and those eyes that is a scary looking snake. It, it is. But I mean, you can just see how, how chilled she is. I mean, she's just getting used to me again. I used to hold her when she was smaller. I used to hold her a lot. You know, and I'm, you know, my, since my collection has grown and since I've got more of these snakes, I don't hold her as much as what I used to, which is, which is a pity. I really do need to hold him. So I have a male for her. His name is Thor. He's roughly the same age, and uh, they're not related. They're not. They're not from the same clutch of eggs. He's the same color as her. And next year in 2023, I'm gonna pair them up and I'm gonna make some baby dumerals that I will put up for sale here in South Africa. One of the great things about where I live in South Africa and where I live in my province is that you pretty much don't need a permit for most snakes. Like I know in other provinces in my country, you need permits for ball pythons and, and retics and all sorts of things. But um, I, know, I know you do need a permit for, for boa constrictors, BCRs, um, BCCs. So, so I know that for a fact, but I don't keep any boa constrictors. This is a Dumeril's boa, which is native to Madagascar. Uh, she's not the same as a boa constrictor. Um, but and she won't get as big as a boa constrictor. So this is my big girl Athena, and let me tell you, I don't do feeding videos because it's um, I just I don't know. I know guys, uh, guys do the feeding videos and they, they get lots of likes. I mean, one day I can do a I can do a feeding video where I, I offer her a rat and give her frozen thawed, and it's a good rat, like you know just pretty much the same size as her thickness of her, of her girth but let me tell you when she hits that rat and she takes it and she grabs it out of the tongs you know I use these uh, I use these tongs to to put the rat in and dangle it in front of her you know feeding feeding live is is illegal and frowned upon and you know, you're not supposed to do it so we feed our snakes frozen thawed um, and uh, yeah but when she hits it you can feel that power uh, and uh, you just think grokky moses i don't want to get bitten by that i don't want her to hit my arm like that and coil as if she thinks i'm food anyway so guys if you're looking for a nice constrictor one that's not going to get too big, one that if you socialize and you handle, it's not going to be nearly as aggressive as a reticulated python, a snake that's going to grow bigger than a ball python, not as big as a Burmese python, um, but still be impressive enough to show off to your friends and, and, uh, and still have the enjoyment of a snake that you're not going to need two people to, to handle. You're not going to have to be in the room with somebody else when she's fully grown in case she starts to constrict you around your neck like a, like a retic once they get over 10 feet you're usually going to have to have a second person in the room with you when you start pulling them out in case you run into a little bit of trouble if you're a pretty strong guy pretty strong muscular guy and you've you got some strength then yeah you'll, you'll be able to handle a, a retic over 10 feet if you know what you're doing even up to 15 feet you know but you, you're going to have to have some power my brew you're gonna have to you're gonna you're gonna because you're gonna have your hands full but if if you are if that's if you 
you know you hit the gym and you and you you've got the strength to handle a snake like that then that's the only time that you should even take a chance on handling anything that that is that big but a, a dumerals like this no problem you guys will be fine if she latches onto you and bites you and starts to coil you you're just going to be in a shitload of pain but you can get her off um a couple of tricks to getting a snake off um, from biting you never ever pull your hand away and never ever yank your hand out those teeth are curved you could break teeth off in your skin and not only that you can create an abscess in the mouth of the snake uh, one of the first things you do is what I, I do is I go straight for my my alcohol uh, hand sanitizer here if I can and if I've got one hand free, I'll just spray this on her mouth. They hate the taste. Same with mouthwash, if you can get your hands on mouthwash. If you're close to it, that's closer to me. Or if you can get into the bathroom, the bathroom is right next door to my snake room. Turn on the hot tap, hold her head or wherever she's biting you, hold it under the tap. Any snake for that matter, anyone that's got a grip on you, one that's coiling you, one that one is thinking that you food. And hold your hand underneath, hold your arm underneath over the head, the hot water. And as that hot water starts getting hotter and hotter and hotter, she'll let go, okay? And I've heard a story, I swear, no, no jokes, no lie. I've heard of a guy actually biting the tail. She won't let go. Like, usually when an animal starts getting attacked, they're the, the, the only vulnerable spot. You know, once they've bitten you, they've got no other defense mechanism, okay? So, they're using their mouth to bite you. So, if they're going to attack. So, if something else attacks it, it's got to let go and it's got to, it's, got to, it's got to attack that other thing. So, I've heard of a guy that actually got charred, bitten, and he bit the snake's tail. Oh, he grabbed it and charred the thing, stuck his teeth right in. And that was the only way he could get his retic to let him go. No, no word of a lie. I wish I could. I wish I could give you a link and tell you what the video is. Anyway, so do not do that at home. That's your last option. That's your last resort. But I can tell you something now. If I'd run out of all options and I was getting coiled, and I had to bite my snake, <laughs> I probably, I'd probably do it. Anyway, so guys, this. I mean, look at this beautiful girl. I mean, she's chilling now. Okay, she, she's relaxed. She's used to being out now. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it back in a tank. Thanks for watching. Uh, I, hope you, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe. Join us on the journey. I hope the next video is a cool one. I've got some really good stuff that I want to show you. I'm just, uh, I'm just busy planning. I'm just busy planning some content for you guys. I don't want to be repetitive on the stuff that I do. So I'm trying to think of some really cool topics to talk about when it comes to snake keeping, husbandry. I don't want to go over all the other stuff that all the other YouTube guys do. I um, miss so many guys that are talking about keeping snakes and breeding them and, and how to do it. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do a bit of a few other unique things here. So guys, from Athena and me and North Coast Constrictors, cheers. We'll catch up with you soon. Watch how quickly she wants to go back into her tank. She really and she well let me put her water back in first because that's always a... Alright, so what you not want to go now. Usually she's like <laughs> there you go, she's not cooperating. Usually she just makes a beeline for Okay, so she's doing this especially for the video. I think she wants to be a movie star. Come on girl. Let's go. Let's get inside the tank now. Let's go. You ready to go? There we go. Now she's going in. Okay. All right. Now she's got the hang of it. And then I secure that with my, my rubber clip. My rubber stopper there to stop the glass from opening up. Guys, thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your week. Catch you on the next video.